I want to show you how to take your basic template and to add cool scorch marks behind every time you crash. So that way, if you have a really hard level, you leave a litter of dead crash marks everywhere you go. Let's check it out. First, we got to import our sprite sheet that we're going to use. If it actually is a multiple sprite sheet, we need to turn it into a multiple and then edit it. And then we need to slice it up. This one's 256 by 128. Once it's been sliced, then apply. And I like to actually name what we're going to use so we don't have to go searching through each number. Once we've got it, then we're going to go ahead and modify an existing prefab. So grab a explosion. Put that onto the scene for testing purposes. And then what we'll do is we'll attach that new sprite to it and move it down a little bit. And this prefab we can now save as a variant. By dragging it back into the prefabs folder, it's going to say, hey, what do you want to do with this? Let's well, call it a variant. Changes the icon a little bit. And let's call it something like explosion with scorch. All right, and for this particular player, we need to change his prefab when it instantiates the explosion to the one with the scorch mark. So now if we play it, we'll leave behind a scorch mark every time we die. That's cool, but it doesn't persist. So in order to make it persist between scenes, we have to do something called don't destroy unload, but first we need to put it somewhere. So we'll create a container, we'll call it the scorch marks container, And we'll give it a new script, Scorchmarch container. Let's go ahead and add that. Open it up in Visual Studio. And let's look. So first things first, we need to create an instance of this. That's only going to be one. We're not going to create multiple. So that's why it's static. And then we're going to go ahead and get a variable for the current scene. So the current build index is going to be equal to using scene management, scene manager, get active scene, set the build index. And we check to see if our instance is non-existent, we set it to this one. This is called a singleton. We also save the current scene index based on whatever our current build index is. And when then we don't destroy unload this particular instance. If there's another instance, we want to check to see if it's a part of the same scene. If it's part of the same scene, we want to keep it. If it's not part of the same scene, we want to destroy it. So if the current scene index is not equal to this one, we want to destroy the instance. Otherwise, we want to just destroy whatever gets created on the new scene because it's not part of the singleton. So that's real straightforward. We'll save that off. And then we need to actually tell what to save, and that's the scorch mark itself. So the scorch mark itself will edit the prefab, and the scorch will give it a persist value, or a new script called persist. Edit the script. And on this one, what we'll do is we'll first find the container that's not going to get destroyed. So that's going to be our scorch marks control container. And then when we get awakened, what we'll do is we'll set the parent to the scorch marks container first by finding it and then by setting the transform parent to the scorch marks container transform. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and save this prefab variant. Run unity. And now we should see two things happen. Over there on the left, there's a don't destroy and load. And because we changed the scene, it saves the scorch marks. But they're kind of hiding behind the terrain. I don't like that. So let's go ahead and change that by adjusting the prefab. The sprite render order in layer one, we set it higher. It's just like Z index for HTML. The idea is we want it to appear above. And there we have it. Shout out goes to Avanish S for this great idea. Now, if you've got a great idea of your own, then share them with us in Hackington's or check out the Unity Game Club.